inside the show. And now your host, Justin Allegri. Welcome, everyone. Let's jump right in and revisit the news and events from Monday. Starting in the AL East, Carlos Cobra picked up win number eight this year as the Ducks claimed victory over the Blue Jays 4-1. to one. He is among the AL leaders in wins. And that's what's going on around baseball heading into today's action. Join us again tomorrow for more updates from around Major League Baseball. Thanks for joining us. Tuesday baseball on the show. It's the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Ducks. With my partner Chris Singleton, I'm John Schaaf. Singing, we're going to see a lengthy win streak put to the test here today. Well, when you're winning like this, it's a fun place to be. In the dugout and in the clubhouse, the music is loud after the ball games. The food tastes great. I know this team wants to keep it going. So, almost ready to get underway. And our pitcher tonight, Dan Larson, having a pretty ridiculous season so far, singing. Yeah, he battled through seven innings last time out. He pitched well enough to get the win thanks to that offense. He'll look to turn in another quality start in this one. Okay, all set to go. Brandon Marsh steps to the plate. Leading off for the Angels, the left fielder, Brandon Marsh. The pitch off the plate and we're underway first pitch 7 -11. the 1-0 and yeah, there's a the ball right hander kicks deals Cohen giving chase tracks it down for the out one away all right, let's take a look at the Angels lineup. Chris, this is a lineup offensively that could be really good for years to come. Well, in this day and age, if you can't slug and get on base, that OPS has to be at a certain level. If you're going to produce runs, give your pitchers an opportunity as they're facing tough offenses as well. Here's David Fletcher having more success against left-handed pitching this season, as might be expected. In there, and it's 0-1. Man, I mean, nice job just presenting it to be better than it actually was. 0-2 oh, as he oh, waves at that one. Just off the outside edge. Really good take, especially with two strikes. No score, just getting started, top of the first. Next one misses, the count now two and two. Next pitch is popped up. Moose settles underneath it, puts it away for the out. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just that got underneath first. it a little bit and popped it up. Fielder, number 27, Mike Trout. Two outs, base is empty. Here's Mike Trout. He's a guy who does it all. He is quite an athlete. I mean, you look around the other sports, basketball, football, you feel like he could thrive in one of those sports too. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Oh, 
Righty delivers. Strike two. Good pitch to hit on a tee up in the zone. I think he was looking for something else right there. Kicks and deals. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Third out. That ends the frame. Angels go quietly there. Onto the bottom of the first. No score. Bottom of the first. And today's starting pitcher, Reed Detmers. Well, what quickly stands out to me for this guy is that he comes in with a three to one strikeout to walk ratio on the season. So when you consider consistency, the ability to get swings and misses and to limit base runners, that's critical in winning games today, especially when teams are depending on the big swing, the home run to win ball games. Bottom of the first and the batter will be the shortstop Lawrence Cohen. The big lefty turns kicks deals. Ball one and a pitch inside. That misses the zone, and that's ball two. And the pitch. That one missed. The pitch. Bounce to third. One gone, bottom half of the first. And let's take a look at the lineup. Someone who makes things happen for them, in part with his legs, Al Moose. Took a pretty big step last year, Silver Slugger Award in the American League, and now you're on the radar. Everyone knows it, your teammates know it, and they expect a lot from you because of that success, and so there are gonna be times or you're going to have to put the team on your shoulders, and I know he's more than capable of doing that. Mikey Cohen digs in now. Cohen really thriving with the bat this season here at home. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Well, he had a pretty good look at that pitch, and not sure exactly what tied him up there. Couldn't pull the trigger, and perhaps the best pitch you'll see in this at bat to hit. And he deals. He can't get there. That should be extra bases. Around first, digging for two. And that's a two-bagger. Well, the last 10 games or so have been anything but fun at the plate for him. So that one has to feel good. He really shot that one down the right field line and somehow found a way to keep it from slicing foul. One thing that was great about the approach is head was down all the way through the pitch. And that that's how you do it. The Next catcher. to hit, Stephen Cohen in there for strike one. Ball one there. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether. And that will fall. They won't risk the send. Runners at the corners now with one away. Two consecutive base hits for these guys here. That's a ball that a lot of times you'll see the shortstop or left fielder be able to get to if it hangs up in the air long enough. But right there, it just died and found a way to drop in on the green stuff, a base hit. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Now it's going to be Oliver, the man. First pitch, just misses. At the belt and fires. 
and fouled off. Just missed. If he's able to connect on that, look out. The pitch. There's a swing and a drive. One run is in. That'll touch down off the base of the fence. Across is the runner from first. And they take a two-run lead. Stringing them together, that's three hits in a row. Everything was mechanically sound with that swing right there. I mean, that's pretty much what you're wanting to replicate with every rep you take. You want good balance, barrel directly to the baseball, and good long extension after contact out in front of home plate. Man, there are a lot of doubles in a swing Batting like that. Fit. And here the is Ben hey. Witt. In there, and it's 0-1. And here it comes to the right side. Over to first. Got the out. Well, they're really running up the pitch count in this first inning. Lots of confidence from this team that is, that is perhaps the hottest in the right baseball field. right now. Spencer. Seven. Now here is Spencer Savage. Good contact guy, good defender. First pitch doesn't find the zone. He was late there, strike one. Well, I know they've gotten out to an early lead, but you don't want to take these opportunities for granted. With two outs, still lock in with a quality at bat, drive in that run. You may not have another guy in scoring position the rest of this ball game. Next one is off the plate, and it's two and one. And the pitch. And now this one's a rocket to right. Way back there. Gone. A towering home run. Home run number 10 of the year. And they add a couple more. It's 4-0. That one was a hanger, and pitchers typically don't get away with making a mistake like that. And right there, he made him pay. And yeah, the batter now, Andrew the Bambino. This guy has turned into a beast. The center fielder, Andrew. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. That one back there makes the catch up against the wall. One inning in the books here. The Ducks on top here, four to nothing. So digging in, Taylor Ward. His home and away splits there. The right fielder, number three, Taylor Ward. The pitch. And there's the strike. He's already pitching with a 4 nothing lead, so we should see him be aggressive. Fill up the strike zone. Don't issue free passes. And the right-hander deals. Fought off foul. Oh, and two now. Stays alive. Got him. Now one away. So he gets the call and picks up the strikeout looking. Sometimes with a good hitter at the plate, he'll be the one to get the benefit of the doubt if he lays off on a close pitch like that, but just not right there. Strike zone definitely expanded a little bit with two strikes. Now at the plate, Jared Walsh.
and a foul ball. Next offering is down low. This is a very important inning here. After scoring all those runs, you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down. The offense has worked hard. It's shut down inning time. The wind of the pitch. They say you win. One, two now. And another ball. Had some cut action to it. Velocity pretty good on that slider. So far, moving the ball around nicely. Next offering upstairs. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. One down, base is empty. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Boog, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at-bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a full scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. Here's Joe Adele. Foul ball there. And a pitch. And it's one and one. Gary Simmons has the plate duty in this one. Well, with Simmons, it's not always your standard strike zone, Boog. It kind of gives a little extra in some parts of the zone and then can be tighter in others. But I think the important thing is he doesn't get labeled as inconsistent. So you got to stay ready up there. And a foul ball. Looked like you got a little excited on that fastball. Got to think to yourself, I want to stay up the middle. That way, if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark. If you're a little late, opposite field not. Next pitch misses. Now two and two. And a pitch. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Typically, that high fastball, if it's close to the top of the strike zone, a hitter, if he's prepared for it, can get to it. But that one just had that little jump at the end, which indicates there's a good spin rate on it, and it didn't decrease in velocity as that hitter's internal clock would expect it to, and that's why you see the swing and miss. Max Stassi comes up to hit. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Walsh off of first with two away. Out to short. Out number three. We go to the bottom of inning number two. The Ducks with the lead in this one, four to nothing. Bottom of the inning at the play. Elvis Santos. Singing, you can't ask for anything Those more. This guy checks him. all the boxes offensively. He's the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and off the field. And now the lefty. And ball one. Singy wasn't very sharp in the first, got hit around a little bit, just wasn't able to locate particularly well. A lot of stuff for the fat part of the plate. Yeah, Boog, he wasn't fooling anyone. It's a tough place to be because it's not always obvious what adjustments need to be made. Sometimes it's location. Sometimes it's being too predictable. Sometimes you're tipping your pitches. He's going to need to figure it out quickly, though. Kicks and fires. Swung on, popped up on the infield. Makes the grab, and there's one down. Batting nuts, the second baseman, Al Moody. 
move. Al Moose will hit next. A guy who makes an impact not just at the plate, but also in the field. Next pitch downstairs, and that is ball one. Kicks and deals. And it is two and one. The wind of the pitch. This one lifted in the air, left field. Marsh makes the grab. And there's two down. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Now here is Lawrence Cohen. This guy is one of the best athletes in the sport. Swings through that one. 0 and 1. This strong second inning is a confidence builder for him, a relief for his manager. Doesn't have to get into that bullpen quite as early. Next pitch is downstairs. Two down, nobody on. Up the middle. Sends it to Walsh, and that ends the inning. Back here at the ballpark, Colton Wong up to here. This is a guy you got to keep an eye on when he digs in. Definitely been known to drop a drag bunt from time to time, and he's pretty good at it, Chris. Yeah, and he creates a, a sense of urgency for the defense because of the speed, because of the ability to put down that bond. The 0-1. Now you see even sluggers from time to time try and use the bunt really as a way to beat the shift. The 0-2. Popped up to the left, into foul ground. The next offering misses. It's a ball and two strikes. And the righty deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Righty to the plate. The punch out there, and that's the first out. Here's Anthony Rendon up to the plate. Number six, Anthony Rendon. First pitch, not close. The pitch. This one in the air center field. The Bambino has a beat on it and puts the squeeze on it. That's out number two. Up next for the Angels, the left fielder, Brandon Marsh. So two down now, and here is Brandon Marsh. 0 for 1 with a fly out. That one's in there, 0 and 1. That was absolute gas. Triple digits on the gun. It's just a different experience as a hitter watching that go by. Comes up empty on the swing, 0 and 2 now. Bringing the cheese on that one. Oh, 
Next offering misses. Now one and two. O2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. But why the kick the pitch? And a swing and a miss. And that will end the inning. Angels held in check. They're down 4-0. Set for the bottom of the third, and now here's a speed threat. Outfielder Mikey Cohen. The left fielder, Mikey Cohen. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. In for a strike, going one. Well, he looks fresh out there. Just needs to get a little more confidence and remember how good he's been in the past. The pitch. That one down the line, and that squirts through. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. The throw in. The tag out. Now batting. Catcher. Steven Cohen. Now it's the power speed combo. Steven Cohen. And that's in there for strike one. And he deals. Late with the swing there. He got away with one there, but he knows he can't go into that spot very often against a guy like this. Going to now. That's down and in. The pitch. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Now two away. Oh, really went aggressive in with that slider. Good two-strike pitch now right there. At worst-case scenario, it's Oliver. weak contact in play. Exactly where he and the catcher wanted it. Two outs, base is empty. Digging in, Oliver, the man, doubled his first time up. Marsh drops steps, heads back on it. And that is that. Just bounce to it. Everybody wanna come, I'm announcing it. I'm always gonna get it, I'm always gonna get it. Even if you sit. Welcome back. John Chomby with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Leading David the Fletcher. Eight. The shortstop, David Fletcher. Larson back to work. Pitch misses, and that's ball one. Well, certainly doing his very best out there on the mound to bring that win streak to a halt. And the 1 0. Just off the inside edge. And now the count filled up three and two. Now in this three ball count, down in the ball game, you've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. A wind and the pitch. And down on strikes. One out. Boog, he was shopping at the buckle right there, the way that slider made him look. That was now just that nasty. The center fielder, Mike Trout. And now, Mike Trout struck out swinging his first time. Oh, now this one's blasted deep to left. Way back there, on its way, and out of here. That 
one felt good. His seventh home run of the season. It's 4-1. He got on plane with that high fastball, then look how his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Absolutely crushed that pitch. So now the Angel cleanup hitter, Taylor Ward, went down on strikes now his first time through. Fielder, Taylor. First Ward. offering, and it just misses. There's the strike. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a base hit. Just a very nice approach and swing right there to use the big part of the field. Everything was on time. He stayed balanced through the entire swing and just launched that one into center. Man at first with one gone. And now the first baseman, Jared Walsh. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Left-hand hitter waits. Tap to first. Whit. A flip to the pitcher covering as the pitcher brings it in for the out and the runner advances to second. Now batting the designated hitter, Joe Adele. Now it's the DH, Joe Adele. He was a strikeout victim his first time. First offering misses the mark. Two outs and one in scoring position. Next offering is in for a strike. Swings through that one out in front that time. Runner leads away at second. And down on strikes he goes. Good job at damage control right there. Angels do get one, however, on the Mike Trout home run. It's now a 4-1 ball game. And welcome back. Here's a speed threat, Ben. Wit saying he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? Well, just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Well, he hasn't quite settled in out there. Four runs in three innings. He's going to have to have some quick one, two, three innings to pitch deep into this ball game. And a foul ball. And a pitch. That's off the mark. And a count two and one. Bottom of the zone and a called strike. Man, this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. Next offering is in the dirt. And that one fouled off.
Hammered down the right side, but foul. I love how he tracked the ball right there and was able to get through that fastball just a little bit late. Otherwise, it stays fair. I think if the top hand is a little stronger, same swing produces a home run. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Well, that's a nice job of grinding out that at bat. Saw a lot of pitches and ends up drawing the walk. Very gritty. Stepping in, Spencer Savage. He has, as they like to say, light tower power. Not a big guy, but a big swing and thunder in that bat. In there for strike one. This is one of those situations defensively where you can't try to do too much. You've got to make sure that you field the ball cleanly and get one out first. It's going to be tough to get two with this kind of speed in the batter's box. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. One away. No, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base paths. It's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders. Have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Next to hit, Andrew the Bambino. In there, and it's 0 1. Witt leads off first with one away. Strike two. Well, I think that pitch surprised all of us. Right down the middle, doesn't get a swing. Not very often you see a hitter lay off a cookie like that. Runner on the goal. Next offering is fouled back. Check on the runner. Whip back in standing. Here comes the pitch. That misses. One and two to count. The pitch. And now two and two. Swing and he breaks his back. To first, they get him, but it was pretty close. Well, that actually works out for the hitter. If it's not a broken bat, it's hit hard enough for a double play. But with the slower roller, defense does a nice job at least getting one out of it. So now here's the DH, Elvis Santos. He's over one. That one's in there, 0 and 1. That's inside. Bullpen activity starting up now. Jared Eikhoff preparing to come on if needed. Bassett getting loose as well. Runner at second, two down. And that one hit to first, takes it himself, and that's the third out. On to the top of the fifth we go. The Ducks on top four to one. All set for the start of the inning. Here's the catcher, Max Stassi. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. It's so impressive because these guys have to do so much study and preparation for their pitchers, for opposing hitters, and really their number one job is to guide that staff through a ball game. And so when you also 
can turn it up offensively and be a force there, that is a win-win every manager's dream. Next offering is in for a strike. And a changeup clips the zone for a strike. The one two. Way high. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And that's the first out. Well, pitchers have become so much better at commanding that high fastball. It used to be that. A lot of guys didn't like to throw it because it threw off their release point and their mechanics and they're aimed at keeping everything at the knees get ground balls but because hitters get a swing path that can lift balls at the knees up in the air and over the fence this pitch has come back into play and they are doing some special things with it. Kicks and fires. You no, know, that pitch not even close. A 2-0 count now. He can't be over aggressive. He's got to make sure that pitch is right on a tee for him. Next one misses, and it's 3-0. Oh. Righty delivers. Fouls one away and now three and two. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. You got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. And yeah, there's ball four. What a battle. It's not always easy laying off a 3 2 pitch. And I tell you what, he earned that walk. The third baseman. Now it's Anthony, Anthony Rendon. Rendon. That one laced to center and a base hit. They get it in quickly. So first and second, now one out. Seems like he got exactly what now he was looking for right you. there. Everything Brandon. was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. So up next, Brandon Marsh. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. One out, runners at first and second. Fouled off, he was late. Two on, one out. Got him looking. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. Well, definitely a borderline pitch right there, and he now didn't look too convinced as he headed back to the dugout. You know, those are tough ones to let go as a hitter, but with the human umpire calling balls and strikes, it's always going to be on you to protect yourself with two strikes. And next for the Angels, David Fletcher. And Boog, I'd say he's due. And first offering is fouled off. Wong over at second. Rendon at first. Two out of the inning. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That's his second strikeout. Angels strand a couple, and they trail it 
We head to the bottom of the fifth. And now here is Al Moose. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. 2-0. And that one fouled off. And what makes him even quicker is the fact that he's so dialed in on the pitch as it's moving through the hitting zone. He can see how that hitter's lined up, what he's trying to do, and where that pitch is going to end up, which gives him that really quick first step. And that's why he makes so many great plays. Trout, ranging to his right, makes a nice running catch. And there's one away. Now batting, shortstop, Lauren. Back to the top of the lineup, and now Lawrence Cohen. This guy, one of the best contact men in the standing on the defensive end. First pitch, and he just misses. The next pitch misses, and it's 2-0. When you get ahead in the count, there's no doubt that the success rate goes up. And that's what he's been doing. It's made a big impact for him in recent games. The wind to kick the 2-0. This one high in the air to left center. Trout is there. He makes the catch, and there's two down. The batter, the left fielder, Mikey. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Mikey Cohen. Check swing, but he went too far. Strike one. The pitch. This one popped up right side. Walsh makes the catch, and that'll do it. Back here at the ballpark, and now batting Mike Trout. The Angels in striking distance, but have some work to do. Mike Boog, it starts with the laid-off man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. Mike Trout, just a special player, a special human, does everything well on the baseball field and seems to do it as well off the field. In for a strike, strike one. And a pitch. Try to get him to chase on the changeup that time. I think with Mike Trout, when you consider all the awards, the wins above replacement, he's on a trajectory if he stays healthy, but he'll end up as one of the greatest position players of all time. Right-hander kicks deals. Outside, that's a ball. And that's ball four. His ability to draw walks has been something that's been part of his career since day one. And now it's the Angels' cleanup batter. Taylor Ward, one for two. One of the unfortunate things is that in this guy's career, particularly early, we just didn't get to see him in the postseason very much. You want to see the best players playing in October. First pitch doesn't find the zone. At the belt and fires. That oh, one off man. the mark. Two balls, no strikes to count. Two-oh. 
That's a strike. Now these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. Trout on the move. That's in for a strike. Transfer bobbled, and there's no throw. No outs. Runner on second. Got him. So he's gotten deep into this game, and at least so far, not showing a ton of signs of fatigue. Jared Walsh getting ready to hit. So RBI spot, but Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. And yeah, the first offering is not close. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Michael Jackson, the hard-throwing righty, is up and loosening. Franchise getting cranked up as well. Pickoff move to second, and diving back is Trout. Trout, the runner at second with one away. Next pitch misses, and now 2-0. Oh. And he flips a breaking ball in there, or a changeup. Either one, <laughs> something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. But 2-1. And a swing and a miss. The 2-2 stays alive. Two two now. Swing and a ball hammered left field, and it gets into the corner, but it's foul. And a swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts. Now, Boog, it becomes pretty difficult as a teammate when a guy's struggling like now this. Back. You don't know if you want to go up and tell him to keep swinging it or if you want to give him his space, what exactly he needs. But right now, it's clearly a struggle for him, and you're just hoping that somehow, some way, it'll click and he can get out of this as quickly as possible. And now it's going to be Joe Adele. And that's in there for strike one. And downstairs. And a pitch. So now one and two. And it really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. And the right hander deals. Swing and a miss and a change up in the dirt. Got him. Inning over on the strikeout. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and mess, and you walk off the field. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound. Jared Eikhoff. And his job is to collect quick outs and keep his team within striking distance. Well, at this point in the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and you need a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. The pitch. Cohen in the box here lets that one go for a ball. Next offering is in for a strike. Yeah. 
in the air out towards right center. And that should be extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. And he greets the new arm from the bullpen with a double. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it. And that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. So, man aboard. Here's the third baseman, Oliver yeah, the man. The Drove in two man. runs on a Oliver. double back in the first. He's the one for man. two. Here's the pitch. Runner on the move. Strike in there. Throw. Save. Well, maybe he thought he should have gone for a triple instead of a double and just decided, I'm going to take third this way. Definitely using his legs to his advantage right here. No outs. Runner over at third. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. Activity in the bullpen for the Angels. Ryan Tapera getting loose out there. Norris warming up as well. Got him. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout, and there's one away. Ben Witt now at the plate. Yeah. On the ground, right side. Wong picks it up, gathers, and throws to first. Now two away as they get a run across. So digging in, Spencer Savage. And it was a homer back in the first inning that got his day started at the plate. Yeah, Boog, a two-run blast as fans were just still getting into their seats here at the ballpark. So if you showed up late to this one, you missed out on a big moment early on. In there, and it's 0-1. Some guys are just more confident if they can track that first pitch out of the hand of the pitcher. They don't care if they fall behind 0-1. Two outs. That one to first, and he can't come up with it. But they get the out at first, and that'll do it for the inning. We're through six full. The Ducks out front here, five to one. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the map, Dan Palmer. And this guy can bring it velocity-wise. Welcome back. New inning getting started. Here's the Angels catcher, Max Stassi. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. The wind of the pitch. Ball one, no strikes. Really good athlete, and many times we talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher as well, really quick feet. He's oh, able man. to recognize the pitch, see the trajectory, go. and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop. The wind to kick the 2-0. Fouled off down the right side. Really impressive with the way he frames, the way that he sets it up, because sometimes those pitches are off the plate, but because he sets up and presents it so well, he still strikes for his pitcher. Next offering is downstairs. And a base hit into right. And that's going to roll to the wall. Now he turns and heads for second. The throw in into second easily with a leadoff double. These guys today are so great with handling the velocity. They're the seeing high season. speeds day Open. after day and a nice Whoa. job of turning that one around. So a man aboard, Colton Wong, the next to hit. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. He 
you won. That one in triple digits. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And one out now. Just blown away in that at bat. Three fastballs, the all perfect. strikes. He wasn't even able to foul one Anthony. off. There's not much you could take away right. from an at bat like that as a hitter, other than maybe there's something wrong with your eyes. He's got to have better timing on the fastball next time. Anthony Rendon making his way to the plate. First offering misses the mark. On the inside corner for a strike. Stassi, the runner at second with one away. Next offering in the dirt, and it's two and one. Man at second. Foul ball. In the air, right field, Savage under it. He's got it, and there's two away. Now batting, the left fielder, Brandon. Now the left fielder, Brandon Marsh. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Swinging a foul back. That's out of play. Boog, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Oh, and two as he waves at that one. Kicks and deals. Down is one and two. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Angels strand one. They're down 5 1. Set for the last half of the seventh, and now the center fielder, Andrew the Bambino. The center fielder, Andrew. And a pitch. The Bambino. That's a bullet, but it goes foul. Well, he got a first pitch breaking ball right there that he clearly liked the look of. Just needed to let it travel a little longer. And yeah, the righty deals. That one the other way. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And a quick out number one. The, the designated hitter, Elvis. So now the DH spot, Elvis Santos. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely. Try to hit the ball out of the park. Do what he loves to do. That one's in there, 0 1. Now 1 and 1. Here's a 1 1. Gets the outside corner with that one. And a ball Good evens the count. Right-handed reliever. And fouled off. And he deals. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That's the second out. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically he likes to shoot the ball the now other way. But that baseball. time, a little yeah. anxious. Move.
She'll chew down now, and here is Al Moose. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Count one and oh. And here it comes. And that one missing low. 2 0. And he hits a ground ball right side. Wong handles the chance, whips it to first. Inning over. And welcome back. Leading off, David Fletcher. Leading off for the Angels, the shortstop, David Fletcher. The pitch. Line drive, caught! The batter, the center fielder, Mike Trout. Here's Trout. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Looking to get something going. This is the guy you want at the plate. He's been great for this team. He is a professional hitter. Swing and a miss. And one and one. Well, I've noticed they've been pitching him hard inside. And the key is, if you're going to make a mistake, you've got to make it off the dish. If it leaks out over the plate with this kind of power, you'll be asking for a new baseball. The one two cut on and miss struck him out and there are two down definitely made him chase a little bit out of the zone right there. I don't think that's the a strike if he three. takes it pretty Taylor. textbook pitching get ahead Four. in the count get the guy in the box on his heels and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage two outs base is empty Taylor Ward the next to hit for the Angels in there for strike one. Two down, nobody on. And that's downstairs and outside. Now this manager knows that his players are just trying to do too much. Everybody needs to just take a deep breath, relax, and let it naturally happen. The 1-1 one -one is cut on and missed at a pitch upstairs. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. And the Angels are gone in order. They're down here 5-1. to one. Vu, yeah, yeah. Out of the bottom of the eighth, here's some real power at the plate. Lawrence Cohen. You talk about elite that's defensive players, especially in the Lawrence. middle of the diamond. And Go this ahead. guy is at the top of the list. Cohen started after it, tried to hold up. Now a look to first, and James Kingsley says he won around. The next offering misses, and the count is one and one. Yeah, we go beyond just the you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. Mikey Cohen. Now the number two hitter, Mikey Cohen. Look, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics, but the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way, and this is what this guy does. Next offering upstairs.
swing, and that ball smashed on a line. He can't get there. It's a base hit. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. Man at first. Here's the power hitting catcher, Stephen Cohen. First pitch, just misses. Righty to the plate. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Throw is low, and he can't pick it. When your catcher's not a great thrower, you have to do a better job at controlling the running game, and that's throwing over, that's stepping off, doing whatever you can to try to keep that base stealer's rhythm off. Well, they weren't able to do it right there. They're going to have to make some type of adjustment, or guys are going to be running all game. pitch and a foul ball makes the count two and one and there's a the ball One out and a runner at second. In the air, left field. March drifts towards it. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. Two down. Now batting, third baseman, Oliver. Now, Oliver, okay. the man, one for three. Sing, you talk about a guy that has all the skills. The range is really good, but the arm just stands out, and he makes all the plays. And that's in there for strike one. And because of that big power arm, he's able to play a little bit deeper, make throws from the outfield grass all the way across the diamond, and still get a pretty good runner. That's impressive. Next offering misses. One ball, one strike. Swings through that one for strike two. Here's a one-two. Just misses with that one. And a pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Cohen at second with two down. In the dirt. And the runner holds. Here comes a pitch. And a base hit. Cohen coming home. Now a long throw home. Not in time. He's safe at the plate. And the lead is up to five. Well done, drives in the run. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Stepping in the long the ball, threat Ben with. Here comes the pitch. Win. There goes the runner from first. Pitch in for a strike. Throw to second. Great jump. And that is a stolen base. It wasn't even close. Clearly not content with the lead they're working with right now. And I like that. I don't think you can get comfortable with a five-run lead in today's game. And now they've got a good chance of adding on. Runner leads away at second. In for a strike. And it's 0-2. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly. 
The pitch. Down the right field line and a base hit. The man around third. He'll score, and it's now a six-run lead. And in its second with an RBI double. Well, that certainly feels good when you can win the at-bat after being down in the count, up against it with two strikes right there. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that, you're thinking double at the very least. Put a great swing on it, and man, he wasn't fooled at all. Here comes Ryan Tapera to the hill. He'll try to strand the runner at second. Number 52. And in scoring position with two away. Next to hit, Spencer Savage. He's already homered here in this one. First offering, misses the mark. The pitch. He hasn't wanted to challenge him. Both of those pitches off the plate away. Don't expect anything down the heart of the plate. You may just have to be patient and take your walk here. 2-0. That's in there. Right-hander kicks deals. 3-2 now. Kicks and fires. And foul ball. Three, two. Got him. And that'll do it. Ninth inning coming up. The Ducks leading this one seven to one. Back here at the ballpark. All set to start the ninth in this one. And here's the first baseman, Jared Walsh. The first baseman, Jared Walsh. Palmer back to work. Good eye right there. I can't play around with him here. It's a six-run lead at this point. Got to attack hitters even if you give up a solo shot. There's the strike. Just not able to catch up to that velocity. Left-hand hitter waits. And one and two. Righty delivers. And that misses off the outside edge. And a pitch. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. And now one away. Oh, you got to be pretty quick with the bat speed these days. So many guys throwing the bat, in the upper 90s. And you see the velocity on that one. Show. Just tough to catch Hotel. up to. I mean, guys are coming in, and they're going max effort. They're not looking to go a long distance. They want to get as many strikeouts as they possibly can. Now it's the DH for the Angels. Joe Adele. Swings through that one. 0-1. Oh and one. The wind of the pitch. There's a strike up high, and it's 0-2. It's gotten into a really good rhythm, set down seven in a row. He just wants to get the baseball and deliver it as quickly as possible. Keep the momentum going. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Angels with only one outlet. Just overmatched on that fastball right there, and it wasn't like he was set up for it by something off speed earlier in the at-bat. Just came right after him with three straight, and he had no answer for it. And next for the Angels, Max Stassi. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. And the first pitch misses for ball one. And yeah, 
And the righty deals. Swing and a miss at 100 miles an hour. Here's a high chopper. Bare hand grab, fires to first, and what a play! Ball game. Another day, another win. I really think these guys have forgotten how to lose a ball game. It's been so long since they've lost. I really don't know what else to say. They're just a can't miss ball club right now. And a 7 1 finish in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chomby. Thanks for joining us.